My name's Andy, welcome to the channel. I'm thrilled to have you on this journey as we'll go up the trail to the single location that I've picked to discuss this particular topic of photographic improvement. Today we're in a stunning location close to where I live. I'll be embarking today on this mini adventure, so please join me where I'll be discussing what I believe in my humble opinion is the most important single factor in how to improve your photography. I'm up at the top now and the reason I've picked this low set location is at this time of year the rhododendrons are actually so spectacular it's amazing. I'm going to head down here there's an archway that is completely covered in rhododendron. What I want to talk about is just how critical it is to be on location. And it's locations like this that really remind us just how beautiful the world is that we live in and the 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 reason we're photographers is to help us to capture, remember, and share the beauty of the world that we're in, not just landscapes, but in every aspect as well. And the old adage that practice makes perfect, or certainly practice makes progress, I don't believe we'll ever be a perfect photographer because it is such a subjective topic in its own right. But as whether we're an amateur, beginner, a complete pro, Practice will allow you to hone those skills, make those skills better, and you'll continually improve. And I am sure that if you do go out on location and practice some of these skills, you will actually get better and better and be a critic of your own work as well. And also appreciate what you like. It's an individual art form. So it's absolutely critical that you practice what you like to improve. And this is the first composition that I want to talk about because it's really important that when you are on location and you're practicing your skill of photography and always improving is to get a sense, get a feel for the location that you're in. What I'm looking at here in terms of this composition is using the flowers on the left to frame the image to actually use the trail as it leads into the image and as the sun catches the ferns and the flowers, the pink flowers at the end of the trail. So I really want the eye to lead through the image. And what I'll do here is capture a series of different images and I'll include a gallery at the end with all of the technical information. In terms of the gear that I'm using, I'll be using my Canon 90D today. On the whole, I'll use the 18 to 135 lens because it's perfect for this kind of situation. If I do use a different lens, then I will also include that in the technical data. But what I will do is talk through a series of different compositions, capture some different images in each of those locations. And it will be great if down below, as you're looking through the gallery at the end, is to just let me know what your favorite ones are. I'd be really intrigued because I think, again, we all practice photography, but it's very subjective. We all have different views of what is a good and maybe even a poor picture. And one of the aspects that I really think is important when practicing photography is to understand the environment that you're in. We actually are in an amazing location here, but it's just part of the world that we're in. The natural world is absolutely stunning. It's important to embed yourself into that and really get a sense of what it is. Capture the beauty, be able to share that beauty, remember that beauty going forward. And that's why as you get better as a photographer, as you practice more, these will become second nature and you'll be continually improving and be able to capture greater and greater images. So let me get my gear set up. We'll capture some images. I'll share one immediately. And then what we'll do, we'll include the rest in the gallery at the end. We've discussed this composition as previously mentioned, but what I've got here is, I'll show you what it looks like on my screen. I'm trying to cut out the reflections as much as possible here. So what we've got, we've got the top of the image just being framed by the bottom of the branches in the trees. We've got the rhododendron, the pink layered in the image 
as the sun catches it, but we've got that dark patch, which really gives us separation. And we've got the sun catching the fern, and then we've got the speckles of light on the trail going through. So let's just bring up the information on this. You can see the information I've got. It's only at 180. If I've actually got a circular polarizer on to cut out the glare, there's a lot of reflection. If I turn that, you can see the amount of reflection that comes back into the image, especially on the fern. So let's cut that out again. What I'll do is I'll capture this image and please take a look at this. And as I say, there'll be more of this location in the gallery coming up very shortly. And I'm in the same location, but what I've done, I've completely changed position. So again, this is part of the practicing when on location. So what I'm doing here is I'm capturing the flower in the foreground in the sun with the trail leading away and using the bokeh effect of the lens to really give us a sense of space in the location that we're in. Capturing the essence, which is the flower, and then trailing away into the distance and the colors in the distance as well. And also, I'm being bitten to death today. There must be a lot of midges in this wood today. And I know I spoke about gear earlier, but one of the things that I'm using today, which is really good in this environment is I'm using a diffuser and a pro mist filter so check out my other video on those but actually this is perfect because it really softens the harsh light as well as the polarizing filter and it basically takes out no light so if you've got a DSLR or a mirrorless I highly recommend a pro mist filter for these kind of occasions I'll include all of these in the gallery as I say let's now move on to another composition location and when we talk about practice, this is what I mean. This, I love the gnarliness of these, these branches, the trunks of the rhododendron. This is actually a massive rhododendron bush right above me. But I'm looking through, you can't quite see it on the camera, but I'm looking through the branches at some rhododendron flowers at the far side. So this is what I mean by practice. I don't know whether this image is going to work well or not. I'll let you be the judge of that. I'll show you the, one of the images and then I'll include some more in the gallery at the end. But I um, absolutely love this. This is what I mean by practice. When you're on location, the number one thing is just to try new techniques, try new composition, break the rules. You know, the, all these people talk about rules, break those rules, that's really vital. So don't worry about framing and thirds and all of this kind of stuff. Think about, do you like the image? Is it something that you would admire? Practice that, take a series of images, and then when you see them either online or on your LCD screen or whatever, look at those images and think, I like that image, I don't like that image, and be critical. Why do you not like it? Why do you like it? Absolutely vital. Practice those skills on location. The only way you will get better is by getting on location and practicing. Okay, so let's capture some images here. And then as I say, I'll include one, which would be my favorite, but then I'll include some more in the gallery at the end. And again, let me know in the comments below which ones you prefer. I've changed lens now to the 10 to 18, but this has prompted me to think actually, what we should really be doing is talking about the art of photography as well when practicing, because it's the technical information, the technical side, you obviously need to practice that, but actually it's practicing the compositions, as I've mentioned, but it's practicing the art form. It's like, it's thinking, where does this create art in its own right? It's not just the technical aspects of photography that are vital. It's the actual ability to picture the final image as well. And the more that you practice and try to visualize what the end result will be, the better you'll become as well. It's again, it's not just practicing the technical aspect, it's practicing compositions, it's practicing what you visualize to be the final image. Because photography at its heart, as, at, at its heart is an art form. And it's, a, it's your ability to convey the message, the story that you're trying to say with your image. So here I'm trying to convey an image of the trail disappearing into the most magnificent woodland, floral, almost, almost kind of a mythical trail leading into the woodland. And that's what I'm trying to capture with some of these images today, as well as just the fact that I'm, I'm capturing the beautiful flowers and the beautiful landscape and the nature that we live in. So when on location as well and practicing, really consider this aspect. And in a location like this, it's absolutely vital to remember that because you see so many pictures of just a single flower. And actually that is key, but actually it doesn't really tell a story. So we can all capture flowers. It's the ability to tell a story of that flower within the context of its surroundings. So learn to 
see the environment as you're practicing. When you're practicing those different compositions and trying to visualize the final result, try to think what you're trying to say here, rather than just capturing a great technical photograph of a flower, what you're actually trying to do is put it into context to tell a story. And that, as you practice more and more, some of those, the composition, the techniques will become second nature. It's the storytelling then that you'll be able to focus on. And so that when people see a flower, they won't just go, oh my God, that's an amazing flower. What they'll say is, oh, that is amazing. Look at the context, look at the natural environment that it's within. And it's part of getting yourself into this environment to practice taking your photographs. I'm in the final composition location now. It's a fantastic one, but, but as we start to conclude our journey and we get on to the kind of final images and the gallery, I really wanted to just emphasize and make one final point about the practice on location is that that yes it is a hobby but actually it's much more than that it's an art form that you can really nurture and develop and really share your imagery and tell stories with that imagery and for me that's the most important aspect of photography so let's go through this final composition location and then i will uh, move on to the gallery Okay, so final composition now. The location, this is, this is possibly one of the best so far. What we've got, we've got the flowers coming over the top. We've got the, we've got the trail which goes over the brow of the hill. So I can get a number of different compositions. My primary composition is gonna be to get low and get the flowers in the distance on the trail, over the brow of the trail, framed by the flowers and the greenery on both sides and the branches. And we've got this lovely arch over the top so let me get that set up and then what I'll do is I'll include these images, the final images from this location in the overall gallery, which will follow directly after this. Please remember to like and subscribe. Your support for the channel is massively appreciated. Let me know in the comments below as well what you think to this topic, because again, to me, the art of going out and improving photography is about the practice and that's what i really love so you have to take every opportunity that you possibly can to get out there and practice mm -hmm.